Welcome everybody. From the fantabulous confines of the Dynasty typewriter here in MacArthur Park where the sweet green icing is flowing down. Harmontown is now in session. All right. Spencer Crittenden. And just for good measure, the mayor of Harmontown, Dan Harmon. <laughs> Comic Con rap. <laughs> Comic books going in the racks. Everybody's having a heart attack. Got defibrillators on the wall. And there's no bathroom stall that isn't filled with gross flaming hot Cheeto diarrhea. The bathrooms are the grossest. It doesn't matter how many stars your hotel has in San Diego that week. Every bathroom is a Tijuana. No offense to Tijuana, but offense to Tijuana. I've been there. I mean, I think even the mayor of Tijuana would be like, you have a point about our bathrooms. They are not a place for surgery to take place. I think if you wash your hands during Comic-Con, they get dirtier than if you just don't wash them. Anyways, thank you for that. Uh, I like that beat. That was like very uh, uh, old western. It felt like I was on a prairie. Let's give it up for Zach McKeever up on the beat, uh, beat booth. But don't let my my my, my forced anxiety driven uh, rhymes uh, uh, cast a pallor on what was really probably one of the most delightful comic cons ever, which is saying a lot because I always have a good time there. Did you have a good time at Comic Con? Oh boy, you love crowds <laughs> and adulation, and it uh, was packed this year. Uh, I felt like on Thursday it was as packed as Friday, and on Friday I thought it was as packed as it was on Saturday of the prior year. And I didn't go on Saturday because I was terrified. It's kind of interesting this year. I kind of feel I I I I mean I got, I'm in some kind of limbo where I'm like I'm I'm like okay I I'm I'm constantly aware of like okay Harmon you're you, this is a thing to not be taken for granted getting on a golf cart and being like, like doing this thing. It's like you're it's a thing that you keep doing. You never say no to it. You go there. You you definitely like it. It's a religious experience for you. You go there, and, and, and it's like Mecca for all these people, and you're a part of that. You're a little baby, like... Uh, priest or cardinal, dare I say, within this like Vatican of... These are probably bad metaphors to draw upon in our <laughs> turbulent times. But what metaphor, but what analogy can you use anymore? <laughs> Um, but, 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 but anyways, but, um, uh, I, I like, like this, this year I was kind of like, I was so afraid to either take it for granted or overindulge in it. Like I'm sick of my own face and voice. So I'm like, I'm not a, I don't want to be a rock star, nor do I want to pretend like I don't love this experience that I ended up in like this totally Zen I was like, this is what it is. This is what you do. Uh, can you get to the lobby by 11 a.m., 6 a.m.? Can you be here and talk to this person? Because that is that. And then you, and then I, I and I, what I didn't do is go to the entertainment weekly party. I didn't, I didn't do these things that I, that, that, that aren't in the moment. Because trying to get into the entertainment weekly party is like the last, that's the only, that, that, they, they do that. At, the entertainment weekly party is a, um, is a pagan ritual at Comic Con that is specifically designed to remind everyone that they are they are technically nerds and that that still means being unempowered and gross. Um, you 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 could show up for the Entertainment Weekly party at 7 p.m. with 40 tickets and 20 wristbands and a signed affidavit from <laughs> Steven Spielberg saying, "I approve of these invitations that you sent to this person." Um, uh, you you could be you could represent 50% of the guest list, and they would still be like, "Well, I don't know. It's kind of a hot scene. Can you wait over there for a second? And you're just like, "Come on, let me talk to Adam Savage and get out." Out of here I'm tired <laughs> anyways but I didn't go I didn't go and I didn't really see any of our famous friends I didn't even see you yeah I, I one barely, of your most I famous would, friends I would, I would see you 
I would just see you over in the corner of something. In the boat. That was basically one of the only places we saw each other, I think. On that boat. And I might look party. back at this as the year when it was the peak of maybe, because given my age range, my trajectory, I wouldn't be surprised to find out this was the year when, if you could measure it, like the most of my personal friends and acquaintances and things that I care about were there. Mm-hmm. And yet I didn't really, I just kind of floated around like a, like a was it that same boat that we uh, I was on, like that kind of weird, like old old school yacht? Even better, Jeff. Even better. Oh yeah, this it, one had water jet pack people. I saw that. Yeah, there, there, there was a dude at night with like light up. Let's the, talk about the water jet pack people. And Justin found out that you can't do fireworks. The city or harbor master or whatever of San they Diego, hate that. you can't do fireworks. Uh, I, is that Justin? Because what could be more flammable than the ocean? <laughs> Justin Justin Royland. Uh, co-creator Rick and Warney, he gets a yacht with his buddies every every year. It's become a tradition, and he wanted to do fireworks on it. Uh, and uh, they said, "No, you can't do that." But what you can do, I don't know if they provide this 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 alternative. But <laughs> yeah, you there's can call these, this number. There's these two guys that adorn themselves in Christmas lights and hover over the ocean <laughs> on fire hose jetpacks. And uh, I, I spent most of the night talking to the star of Farscape about whether or not those guys had other jobs. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the most fun. I was just saying, I took an extra 10 milligrams of Adderall. I was shit-faced. I feel bad for the star of Farscape. I, I, I never met him. I, I, I really, him and the Onion Knight, I just, I'll never see them again. The, the man, I fucking let Liam Cunningham have it. <laughs> Don't be the last Game of Thrones guy at the Justin Roiland yacht party with Dan Harmon on it. You're you're gonna get all of that. I don't. I was uh, I, I, I I I was scattered the last time. I was like, oh, I can do shots yeah, with well, Ramsey Bolton. I, it was just just the onion. Yeah, thing. Yeah, I was just like, you're, you're like my your character's like me. <laughs> I got no fingers. I lost my fingers. Yeah, that, that last last time I was there, there was that boat, and then I turned the corner, and there was Sam, the the uh, the, the, the the chubby, oh yeah, reedy guy. And he and talks to my ex. <laughs> 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 Wait, okay, let, let, let's uh, let's talk. Let's talk a little bit more about Spill that. Spill the tea, sis. <laughs> God anyway, damn. Anyway, I gotta get out of here. Ah! <laughs> no, no. Uh, on that boat party, he was talking to uh, my then girlfriend, and um, uh, we broke up at a point. But then, like his birthday rolled around, and like she commissioned a picture for him for his birthday. I'm like, oh, I guess they still talk. That's cool. He, uh, you know, he won the Game of Thrones. Ah, he kind of did. He, he kind of did. did. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you did you put the timeline together ever and go? Wait a minute, is he the causal thing about all this? Did, it's like I hope so. That she, would be awesome. She, she she met him on a boat. Then we broke up. Then she drew a painting of him, and then yeah, yeah. That's that is yep. That the timeline his... works. <laughs> Those three things did happen in that order. Because we were dating. That's kind of the role and then that we he were. had in the show. He was like the oh, I'm I'm no I'm no Brand the Broken, but I really am the metaphor for the author and the puppet master of everything. And nothing bad will ever happen to me. And I'll just I just I'm gonna get all the the uh, West Westeros puss. <laughs> and yeah, she wh- was pregnant too. What? No, no. Oh, because Gilly was pregnant in that. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Were there, were there more uh, GOT folks on the boat today? Nope. No. no. Who were there? Farscape folks. Lin Manuel Miranda was there. <laughs> My good friend. <laughs> Did you guys squash your beef? No, we were back to back for an uncomfortable amount of time. <laughs> I should have, every time, I don't know. I, 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 when I left that party, I identified several errors that I made, and that was one of them. Oh boy, there was about six or seven crucial errors that I made. And Lord knows what the party would have been in my like if I did not make those errors. I probably I, wouldn't be here tonight. Justin and I collectively, although I want to say I had no fucking part of this. I don't know if he how much he did, but like somehow we after the boat closed, um, we accidentally spread the 
idea Virus. that oh. there was a party happening at the Hilton. Mm -hmm. And when the reality was the only thing happening at the Hilton was us <laughs> going to bed. And we accident we 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 horribly pie pipered like a bunch of people that probably lived the opposite ah. direction. <laughs> and the boat away. was so far away from the Hilton. Yeah. And <laughs> so are all the other hotels. Like right, if you're yeah. at the Marriott and you walk from the boat to the Hilton, you're gonna be mad walking back. But you'll be mad walking to the Hilton. Yeah. No, they were. They were mad. <laughs> uh, Nick Rutherford, a new uh, Rick and Morty writer, he, he at one point he got on one of those scooters, and uh, and that was he. He kind of he he tried to make things better by he was doing he was buzzing us as a with millennial uh quotes like he was just it was he kept zipping by us and then saying tubular well he was like saying it was like lateral stuff he was like i'm a team player <laughs> so I was like, like, it was it was, it was it, it, they were good it was good he, he had a good gig cuz he could like whiz by us come up with one and then think about it and do it come back <laughs> and it was perfect it was like a great bit i, I was really excited uh, yeah, and I, 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 I made some new friends, and I talked to a lot of uh, fans, and I, I, I was like, I was really, I felt, I felt more like mirroring, more in the moment. If you encountered me in San Diego, I don't know if you had more of a powerful thing than, than in a day when I was less in the moment and worried that you were going to uh, hurt me or something, but I, I felt like I had more intimate conversations with, uh, with the people I talked to. And there were a lot of people, for instance, say, you know, like not a lot of people, but uh, the proper like fraction of people going like mentioning my workout on the Instagram and how they've been watching it and, 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 and rooting for it or whatever the, whatever you want to say about that. People saying like, Hey, you're going to do another whiting wongs. I'm like, I don't know. Should I, I don't know. Four more people asked then I'll do it. And then a fourth person asked, but it was Jessica Gao. So I, 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 ran, I, ran, I ran into her and I was like, um, uh, yeah, I was like, maybe we should, she, she suggested, well, why don't we, instead of thinking about whether you do another season of Whiting Wongs, why don't you do like, why don't we just do one-offs? Like, like what's, what's the harm of just getting together and doing like an episode? Haven't you whited all the Wongs? Well, that's the thing is that's why I wanted, I was like, I was like, well, we're talking in circles and I, I, it, there's a point where it's actually distracting. Yeah. But, but I think, I think, I think enough Wongs. Have I think there's I think there's, yeah racial <laughs> equality has been restored yes exactly <laughs> yeah 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 we're all right well let's uh, I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I Now that's, that's a microphone. How does that feel for you? Why is this the first time in like eight years that this has been important? Um, you're almost there. Try her out. Take her for a spin. <laughs> Kick the tires. I, hello. Uh, woo! It's so funny now. Having so many flashbacks to the first day I combed my hair in seventh grade. I was thinking the same thing. You were all there. Your applause was as hurtful then as, as it is now. Look who showered. We told you you'd love it. You smell great. Steve Levy in the vodka. My ice bucket. All right, well, let's bring out our guest, a uh, very old friend of the podcast. Um, uh, ha haven't, haven't been talking to him enough lately. Um, needs no introduction, really. You sound so good right now, man. Mm. It's like your hair's been combed. Y your shoes are tied. <laughs> <laughs> your mic was too low, bro. For eight years? <laughs> no, just, just today. Today. It was too low. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I just, yeah. It's re uh, yeah well, well, so, you look okay. great. <laughs> All right. Well, please welcome our, <laughs> our friend, cousin, statesman, brother, uh, Duncan Trussell. <laughs> oh, yeah.
John Contreffa yeah. in the house. Hello. I know the music sounded like uh, your job was now to uh, throw a knife at a woman and miss. <laughs> you used to do that. It sounded very like, uh, please welcome the, the enigmatic Professor Blade. <laughs> Do we have any volunteers? <laughs> what I'm about to practice may look to you like murder. But it's magic. It's magic! I follow you into the light and kill you again. <laughs> I don't think there's a more unimpressive way to describe that trick than missing someone with a knife. <laughs> I, it's y- so <laughs> negative. I mean, I love it. It's amazing. <laughs> It's like William Tell is just like some asshole. Oh, he missed his kid. Yeah. I guess that's when they brought the balloons in. They're right. like, can I? Can we put this in a positive way <laughs> yeah. in the press release? He hit a balloon. Yeah. A- asterisk that was really close to a lady. Right. Uh, so did he miss the lady? Because I'm not coming to see the show if he didn't miss the lady. Yes, I sir, he missed balloon. the lady, but we want you to know that he's a proactive knife thrower. <laughs> He doesn't just miss things. Okay, because I was going to say, I could miss a lady with a knife. I've been doing it for 30 years. That's called marriage. Ah! Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Sir, that, that, that weird forced uh, donkey laugh doesn't, doesn't, doesn't make your inherent misogyny any, uh, any, 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 any lighter. I, th- I thought it did. And I'm a paying customer. You're going to let me, let me in. Let me into your knife show. We're standing on, I'm standing on a sidewalk outside the theater where the knife show's happening. That's what you don't know. All right, let's move on. <laughs> hey, Duncan. Been, what's been good? Yeah, what's new in Duncan Trussell I mean, Lance? like, I know a couple staples. What do you mean? Oh, I had a baby. Yeah. I got what? a little baby now. What? Yeah. Thank you. That applause is, uh, that, that, that's, roll, that's the rolling applause of people who really respect the Duncan Trussell kind of brand because that's they're sweet. like, should he have a kid? Oh, is that what that was? Yeah, well, they're, they're, they're like, I think <laughs> oh, he yeah. maybe should, but should he? I don't know. That's, it's different from like, I mean, who, uh, oh, oh, uh, Bill Cosby. Oh, oh yeah, he had, a, he had a kid. He's America's dad. Look how that turned out. Jesus Christ. I'm not, wait, I can't. First of all, I'm getting so insecure up here. Really? I'm still stuck on the brain donkey laugh. With you were making fun of my laugh. Now you're comparing me no. to Bill Cosby. What? No, I was a no. I'm never making fun. I don't. I don't have time to make fun of other people. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. even. I can't even see you through my ass lining. I, I'm. I'm wearing my own sphincter as a no, blindfold. I. Wow. Yeah. I was. You know, my wife actually asked me today if I had a prolapse, like if my asshole fell out what? in the bathroom. Would thought, I call for help for her? This, this is a hypothetical. Oh, if you did, okay, okay. Like, yeah, like you know, the question was like, if you had an a pro, like if your rectum fell out, would you call for help or would you be too embarrassed? And I said I would fucking hang myself with it. I would. I would, yeah. so I, I, would, I, would like, I would call for help to anybody that was in earshot. I would get a plunger See, and try and just stuff it back in. A blender. A plunger. A, a blender. Uh, now a blender. <laughs> Now that could be something. <laughs> don't don't a Vitamix your prolapse. Yes. <laughs> oh. here's, a, here's a pro tip: never use a blender to get your prolapsed asshole back inside your body. That's just a that's just a fool's errand. I is don't this, know. Is this prolapsed anus thing like just something? This is just a thing that 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 uh, people started it happens to talking about. Olds. It's like elephantitis, like in Breakfast Club. Like it's like a thing that's like technically possible, but it's not like a common it doesn't just happen to everybody like kidney happens stone. all it happens to happens one out of three every people day. that your asshole just falls out of yeah. your ass it could happen to you tonight then yeah it will <laughs> happens more on the full moon it's look really... everybody in the audience look to your left and then look to your right <laughs> <laughs> both of those people suffer prolapsed anuses is it a thing that just happens randomly or is it associated with age does your it's vaccine related vaccine <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Vaxxers. <laughs> right. Take heart, Vaxxers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of people think that the pediatricians are making money off the vaccines, but it's not the case. It's the pediatricians are um, usually connected to proctologists. If you do it... They're you can, getting kickbacks from they the... They get kickbacks from the proctologists. Yeah, so blast them with a vaccine. Within a month, their asshole falls out. You know the whole story. Classic. Yes. 
Yeah. That, that's, that's part of the, uh, <laughs> y- your recent Washington Post piece about prolapsed assholes and uh, yeah. pediatricians. Yeah, I'm in a lot of danger, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're, you're going to get murdered. Well, no, people keep trying to shoot me with vaccine darts. It's fucked <laughs> up, man. Then nobody will take you seriously. They'll go, oh, he wrote this article because he has a prolapsed anus and he's trying to make it part of something other than him being a, a, a real schnook. Oh, so you're going to call me a schnook because my asshole fell out? I'm just saying like, there's probably horrible. a stigma against people who have... That. Your, your very uh, life partner brought up the question, like, if it happened to you in your own bathroom, would you even call my name or would you be so embarrassed that this fate befell you that yes. you would simply try to stuff it back up there like a Kleenex? With a plunger. Uh, <laughs> Yes, I mean, I so sh- so don't 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 look at me as the source of the of the of the of the shade over prolapsed anusry. I I, I welcome it. Well, I mean, it, it, you did call it anusry. It's you don't even mean to do it, but there's a lot of stigma attached to uh, prolapse. Uh, d- d- does your partner uh, often give you weird hypothetical situations like that, or, or is that the first one? Or, or like- oh no, she gets she's it's she'll like the other day she texted me. <laughs> Uh, Cause like I had a, like I've been very busy lately, so I had like a day off. She's like, just relax, just relax, and like see if you know you could just chill out today. And like within two seconds, the next text was, if we get a home invader, you know we have to fight for our lives, oh, yeah. no matter what, because <laughs> they'll just kill us anyway. What? It was yeah. like so our mind works. It, 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 is uh, is she just hanging her weird anxieties on you, like just to, like let them like hang them out to dry because you're Dr. Uh, Russell? Well, no, I think she's gotten sucked into one of these mommy groups, and it's like because after you have a baby, there's all these uh, uh, mommy groups, is what they're called. So it's like moms, like sort of like support groups, for support having group children, for people who just had mothers. a baby, which is like incredibly painful for the man. For the woman, it's not so bad. They fake it. It's a different <laughs> study. But they have to, they have to um, meet in mommy group. They have like online mommy groups. And I think somewhere in there, some probably they were talking about that your asshole can prolapse when you have a baby. It probably triggers, I mean, probably every instinct uh, possible regarding anything dangerous that can ever happen. I think that's safe enough to say that we see that in bearers of our nation's children like they through the eyes of those of us that are childless like it's pretty easy to recognize that having a child changes you and not in ways that are fun for the childless because everything is becomes about like that's a pretty sharp corner of a of a of a electrical outlet like that's right like like, and just beyond that i mean because that's understandable definitely uh cover your electrical outlets. What, 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 what brand of baby did you have boy girl we had a boy a boy yeah brand we had a Costco boy. <laughs> Costco boy. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's great. Oh, it's yeah. wonderful. But yeah, you do go for, you can't, you have, if you like watch an episode of Preppers and you will see peak. That's what authentic doomsday preppers call doomsday preppers. Preppers. No, you've seen the show Preppers. Yeah, we're on a last name basis with the act of doomsday prepping. That's how prepped we are. <laughs> Like you have to abbreviate it, cause yeah, cause these fucking doomsday's coming. It, Preppers, like, what else are you prepping for? Fucking salad? No, <laughs> doomsday. <laughs> Everyone's first course. But it happened. That's like you will. You can become a prepper if you have a baby pretty easily, and <laughs> I'm then you a could see, you could see how it goes. Yeah, you're just yeah. like no, how, I, your, I, how yeah. does your prepping like like get, get, walk us through a a new father's prepping? Like, what what do you do? Well, I can't break that or all in half and put it in my pocket anymore. I have to put it back in the bottle. Because the baby mm. might reach in with its little sausage fingers. No, you and... can't have... Dr- First of all, the thing is, like, if you... In the old days, I was, like, a walking... Yeah, you know how, like, like wild animals pick up seeds right. in the forest? That's right. what I was with drugs, just in my pockets, <laughs> like, sticking you know, you. in your hair. You're like, oh, fuck, get a bag of ketamine. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> So you can't, you know what I mean? You can't do that. You can't have, you can't have any, there can be no. So that your, your doomsday prepping for your baby is just not having loose drugs hanging about. Yeah. Just getting the, the psilocybin out of your beard. Yeah, in, exactly. in case it wants to kiss you. You can't do it anymore. So right. that's a pragmatic approach. And then, and then, um. <laughs> you know what am I? What am I gonna do? Fucking like b- build a, 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 a ark or something? I, I could. Now, I don't. I don't have the discipline. I'm. I'm I, to do that kind of. I shit. don't think you're gonna have to build an ark. 
Uh, but that's you, what you, uh, someone told someone a long time ago, <laughs> and look what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but name, you're not gonna have to build an but, ark, trust but, me. But name one other guy that had to build an ark. Name one other person that had to build an ark. You mean besides Noah? Yeah. Name one other person. Well, the unicorn, as it turns out, should have. Yeah. Damn. He didn't. The unicorn didn't. He was wearing beautiful suits and having fun, hosting okay. shows, and then look what happened to him. You know that song? They didn't make you sing that song when you were in grade school? Yeah. The rats and bats and elephants and porpoises too, and everybody didn't give porpoises. a fuck about the unicorn. It was a, there's a song. Uh, yep. But I'm it's so a, forlorn. It's a really sad, I, fucking I, I, traumatic I song for children that they uh, taught me in my Milwaukee public school. It was like, I was like, oh God, this fucking song again. Like it takes you through the ballad of how the unicorn what once fucking frolicked along with every other yeah. animal, and uh, then then this. Uh, fucking biblical event happened in the. I, guess, I don't know if the unicorn was. I don't. I, no, he, he, the unicorn was out fucking around, having a good old time, and didn't get on the boat. Yeah. Was it, was it Harry Shapin? I don't think any song? animal deserves to not be on the ark. Did they not care about dinosaurs? Well, the di- I mean, no. The problem was at that time the dinosaurs were um, they ju- they were I think extinct. Well, yeah, right? there were bones planted by the devil. Yeah, to, the de- to, yeah. to test us. Yeah, the devil planted fucking giant bones everywhere. But the Bible talks about the Leviathan and the Behemoth. Aren't those like dinosaurs or something? No, those are whales. Those are what? boring. Both whales, of them. Di- yeah. Well, they're extinct. Whales you're, saying, you're saying, okay, those are dinosaurs and they're extinct. I thought that those were the Bible talking about dinosaurs. They're like, check this out. There's no, a brontosaurus. No, we call it behemoth. The Bible talks about... There is no brontosaurus. It's a made-up dinosaur. I think it's real All again. dinosaurs are made up. What? They're just... You know it. I know what? it. What? Oh, you're going to do the agenda, huh? Okay, there was <laughs> dinosaurs. <laughs> the Jesus. whole planet was covered in lizards. Yeah, right. And around. no one cared. Big old d- lizard. Sure, Jeff. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, that makes oh, wow. sense. That's how I'd make a planet covered in giant lizards. Yeah, sure. You that's, know, because we've that's seen not them just everywhere. something you'd say when you were high and an atheist. Um, <laughs> that's right. Did you hear the thing I heard? Uh, uh, there was an M- NPR I, I thing, uh, uh, a radio <laughs> lab thing, where they kind of updated the 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 um, the model of what of the extinction event for dinosaurs, and, and, and whereas we used to think it was like meteor hits and cloud of dust goes up, blocks out the sun, plants die, things that eat the plants die, things that eat the things that eat plants die. It, no, it was a fucking supersonic bullet from from the, 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 the great unknown that 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 shot into the planet at somewhere around the speed of sound or light and fucking like vaporized so much rock as it sh- jetted into the planet that that the v- rock vapor filled the atmosphere, immediately started cooling, turned into a cloud of tiny glass beads that got so hot as they started falling back to the Earth that the entire planet in the span of two hours got as hot as a pizza oven and every living thing on Earth died from having their blood boiling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And it does hold up but because it, but it, because it, it is it would it otherwise some be of the, weird. It was some like, of the best pizza we ever had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But definitely, you'd be dead before your blood boiled. There's no way you know your blood doesn't. You're like, oh god, yeah, that's your brain tingly. Would cook. I think my blood's boiling. But what I, what I still don't understand though is so okay. Then what? Because what we always learned is that oh, the dinosaurs all die as a meteor in the sky oh, yeah. and the thing, and then the little the little marmoset comes out that represents us, you know, and they, they show you the film at the museum and it's like, that's us. Like there's like a little, a little thing with big eyes comes out of a log and it's like, <laughs> what, what, that, that thing up. don't, that, that thing don't got no boilable blood player. Uh, I think they survived you know underground. What? Yeah, or I know. I know they, they had adapted. To oh, they live, stayed underground. They lived underground because, because there were giant lizards going to eat them, so they learned to live like under the radar. But I mean, all right. Well, I, I don't look. I mean, it's worth uh, give it a Google. This isn't the podcast to learn stuff. Um, I did think of you. Uh, speaking of doomsday prepping, though, uh, 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 I, I think of you for other reasons other than this. But there was this. Um, hmm. There is. I don't know if you if you've heard of this guy. Um, and, and now I can't remember his goddamn name, so I can't ask you if you've heard of him. Guy but, Fieri. But, 
Maybe you'll remember his name if I describe <laughs> okay. what, what ha- he was a he was like a hacker guy that was like a genius, and then he um, he got like sentenced to some stuff for hacking early in his life. But then he like they let him off because he was like a, just a bright kid, and they're like, don't waste his life. Let him let him be smart with computers, and maybe he'll now that he's learned his lesson. And he like was an early Bitcoin adopter, and then he like invested all his Bitcoin money into like the stock. He was just so he was just like super rich. And super autonomous and super smart, and then he got really, really paranoid. And he uh, he was he 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 got a house, and he he dug tunnels under the house wow. that were going in every direction, all under the, his entire neighborhood, underneath all his neighbors' houses. Wow. Which I always I was like, D- you could just do that. Fuck. I want. I, that's all I've ever wanted to do. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Is Minecraft underneath everybody and just be like, 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 I mean, I wouldn't like eavesdrop on you or anything. I'd just be like under your house and I'd be like happy and you'd be happy because you'd be like, I love showering and I'd be like, I love dirt. <laughs> and I, I, every once in a while I'd, I'd grab the pipes like Chunk and the goon, Goonies and Chunk, no, uh, uh, what's his name, Sloth, and, and go like, like that. And then I'd hear the calamity above me. That would and be I'd so smell. fucking weird but the to guy, find you under someone's house. Yeah. Like it's like Harmony Burra down there. He's got. But the guy was totally prepping for Doomsday. Yeah. That's why he was digging these tunnels, and he was soap. And he, but he had some plan that involved like app development or something. And he hired this kid to work for him, and he was so dedicated to. And no one knowing about his tunnels, because what good is a network of tunnels under your house if anybody knows about them, except for all the people he hired to dig them and let just leave after they were like, these are going to cave in pretty soon, bye. Um, and he didn't do anything about them. But he, this kid that he hired to write his so- mysterious doomsday software, um, he put, he did this whole thing where he picked him up from an airport. He put like a crazy, like uh, Silicon Valley version of a blindfold on him, drove him around for three hours, took him to the fucking tunnels, gave him a bucket, an Xbox and a, and a laptop and, and said, you're going to work down here. Why can't he work at a hotel? I don't know. Um, I guess he didn't really want him to literally know what city he was in. Maybe. I don't know, but he didn't dig a hotel. He can't dig a hotel. I mean, he tried uh, to disastrous results because then like at some point, uh, a fire happened down there. I mean, the guy had no, he was a hoarder and he was, you know, he was very, very, very paranoid about the government, sure. you know, knowing everything he was doing. Not, not that paranoia doesn't typically apply to like, also, this is a fire hazard. Yeah. Um, it, 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 and, and so he just had stacks of newspapers and magazines and <laughs> things and, um, and, and had this kid living down in his spider dungeon. Um, well, he, lived upstairs and then the kid texted him like I smell smoke and it might be an electrical fire and he was like all right then I'll turn off all the lights down there clunk and and then and then like so then that guy was down there walking through a maze of hoarded newspapers and burning walls and he probably passed out from smoke inhalation and died one of the most horrible deaths you can die. What? And uh, the, the, the guy made it out onto the lawn and was like, I think someone's in there. And the fire department was like, holy shit, there's a fucking prairie dog city under your house. Fuck. Anyways, do you, do you remember, do you know that guy's name? Michael Stipe. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl Clunt. <laughs> I was close. No. It's, a, it's, a, it's like Eric DeWitt or something. No, man, I don't know that guy's name. It just seemed like the kind of guy, like, like that maybe your, you know, your, 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 your congregation and my congregation, yeah. they, they have a joyful overlap. I, sure. th- I like to think, and like, I, I, but then there's like, there's stuff that your congregation probably thinks about more than, than my perception of mine, and I thought that might be one of them. That, that if a guy was like, who was convinced that the world was ending so much that he dug all these tunnels and then accidentally killed a dude, I thought maybe that was something. Well, you know, man. To what I think when I see these fucking preppers is why do you want like it, they want to stay alive after everything ends? Yeah, like while things are happening, they're not that into it. They want, right. you know what I'm saying? So it's like that. You look at the life of this subterranean. I know, I know, I know why. Why? Because I'm from Wisconsin. That's not why. I, I, that's why I know why. Yeah. Because I, I, that's something that I'm coping with in therapy is this insidious, compulsive fear of being a schmuck, of mm. being t- uh, uh, the, 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 the mark, the rube. Okay. There's so much emphasis in the Midwest on 
um, how you uh, those people in California and New York, they're crazy. They're pretentious. They're delusional. They don't understand that you're supposed to have winter for 10 months um, and that your car door is supposed to f- freeze broken. Um, it, 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 they, they're not practical people. We're practical people. And if you're ever, should you ever be um, caught off guard by your taxes or your medical payments or anything like that, it's like, there's a bigger fear of that. And I'm only using my eye statements. I'm not, if you're from Milwaukee and you're like, fuck you, I'm fucking cool. And I skateboard, um, <laughs> on ice. Um, <laughs> but, but, but I, I'm so, so, I mean, but I do think it's like a cultural thing, like in the, in the more, in the less coastal uh, thing where you're like, uh, uh, I, 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 I'm more afraid of, uh, being, anyone's sucker that I am afraid of not living a, a, a fun life. Okay. I see. So, so like that, it's like you, the, you, you can live to 75 in a freezing tundra thumbing your chin. Uh, that's a Midwestern thing. Um, if you do it with your nose, it might break off the, the, you, you can, you can die happy going like, yeah, but at least I didn't go to California where those people are crazy. Oh, they talk to their own hair. Yeah. They're crazy. Okay. Like, like, and, and, and so I, that's, that's, I'm not saying this guy's from the Midwest. I'm saying doomsday prepping. I totally get it because I, when I think about it, I get, I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Because my biggest nightmare about about turning on the tv and 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 have it have it's, it's going to, well it happened the thing that you've been thinking might have happened for 40 years yeah. because it's like one of many things that might happen would happen and i don't have the fucking bag of shit i could have bought yeah for 40 years i'm just gonna be like oh i lost at life yeah when really that's not how you lose at life you lose at life by <laughs> Living after the apocalypse. Yeah, by living in a shit tunnel with a bunch of newspapers yeah. and smoke, and you climb out and why? It's a. I, I. It seems like the entire phenomena is really, really tragic. Not just because the preppers' kids. Like God, may you never be born to a family of preppers. It's the fact that those people should what they say is going to happen happens. That's the; those are going to be the people who create the the next human race. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, and that and that resonates with like our our model of like Australia and America. Like we we often refer to that as if there's like maybe a oh you know you know why Americans are obsessed with tits and guns is because it's part of our like genetic socio psychological like thing that we were like where we run from things and panic more easily because back in the day when traveling the Atlantic was 70% lethal. Yeah. Like it actually created a filter of the kind of people that had children from which people are descended. And actually it's some people will make the argument that like Australians and Americans are like, we're different like Uh. in our psychology and our culture because it's like we're descended from, from Little crazy people. Oh, you mean like yeah, like the crazy Fremen survivors. and Dune or whatever. Like the yeah. you had the the where, where we have some kind of like genetic survival weirdness. That or paranoia. Is, I think yeah. paranoia is like probably the better way to talk about it. Yeah, well, for sure. I mean, definitely paranoia. I mean, in in anger, a lot of it, a lot of anger. I mean, the the country's been at war for what is it? Ninety three percent of its history now. Ninety four percent of its history. Hours. Yeah, I think it's ninety three percent. Someone out there probably knows ninety three percent, ninety four percent of our history. We've been at war. Now they're finding out trauma gets encoded in your DNA. There's epigenetic trauma. So even if you didn't go to war, if like your grandfather went to war, and he did. Well, well there you go. Hey. Yeah. That's great. So it gets stuck in you. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Well, that's cool because I didn't really talk to my grandpas as much as I should have given that they fought Nazis. Well, now, you basically did with your genes. Yeah. Now now I can be like, you know, it's a hard, it's a hard war. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm going to go out back and take a photo of me smoking a cigarette on a tank. Yeah. I, I well, always feel like the doomsday preppers are the worst off because it's not like, I guess there's some of them who do it secretly, but like if anyone knows you're a doomsday prepper, that's the first place I'm going to fucking go to. It's like you probably want to, like, if, if someone has, like, a crazy house full of water, it's like, I'm going to go shoot that place up You're first not going to do that. You're not, not going to shoot up a place. I'm just thinking of, like, the, the masses that are that are looking for people oh, yeah. and, and haven't I'm going to go straight to 
Dan's stuff. place. I, I, my, if, yeah, me too. That's my dim, that's my disaster fa- when, plan. When it all falls to shit, I'm going straight to Dan's place because he has a gun. He doesn't know how to work. He's got all the and, water. And he's got he's got all the water. <laughs> I, I, he, he'll he'll point a gun that's not, he, that has the safety on. He doesn't know how that fucking thing happens. And It'll be I'll, like I'll, an I'll action go, movie. Hey, hey look, I I live here now, and we're gonna have. <laughs> I, I, and then I'm gonna take your gun. I'm gonna show you how to work it. Ah, and then kill you. That could oh, have, oh, and, and then, what a roller what coaster a roller ride! Coaster. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I went into a uh, I, when I when we were shooting this show. When I was shooting the show, Joe Rogan called Joe Rogan questions everything. We were like, it was a very funny show because I, he because he never questioned Joe Rogan. <laughs> Admit it. That's no, okay. so dumb. <laughs> No, it's like we both went into the show. I know I did. We both went into the show with a kind of like, uh, I really thought maybe we're going to fucking find something. I remember you telling me about this because yeah. you and I, I this like, like, seems like a different world, but we were briefly talking about like developing a thing yeah, with yeah, yeah. you. Yeah, that's right. Like where you go out and you were like, I just did that. And yeah. it's like. It didn't. Well, it was, it was because if you want to treat you. Art Bell does it really in a in a perfect way, or he did it in a perfect way. Wait, did he died right? Unfortunately, Art Bell passed. I think so I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, he um, did. He like would just let people talk about the story. He doesn't right. question it. Whereas, like Rogan, over the course of the series, began to realize, like, oh yeah, we're, it's not. Of course, it's not. It's not out there. We're, we're right. just meet, we're meeting with people who are like saying they have alien seeds and planted in them and stuff. And but anyway, we ended up in a underground subterranean limestone cave. I ended up there. Metaphorically. With, creatively. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that too. But called reality television. Yeah. But it was a it was like an a limestone cave that got the government had used to store shit and then this guy bought it. And he was renting out space where you could park your RV down there. And you realize, like, once the door shut, right. the blast door shut, and it locks, that guy becomes yeah. king. I saw a thing. Uh, I remember you telling me about that. It was like, like, like there's a tri- they put a tricycle out there because they like you have yes. tours of it. It's like, oh, the future of tomorrow thing. And it's like, oh God, no, like Lord, it's a of the playground flies. set underground. Yeah, like yeah. remind me that I'll be coming here with a child when there's no law and I'm still who I am. That's right. Uh, and can't do a sit up, much less stand up to the guy who had the foresight. And biceps to dig a hole I'm yeah, living in now. That's right. Here's my toddler. Uh, take care of her. I'm gonna go hunt for frozen pizza. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I hope nothing untoward happens as you create a new society with my mosquito coast. Um, the, the, anyways, the uh, uh, mosquito coast. You gotta watch that movie. It's amazing. I think it's, it's actually really relevant now. And it's Harrison Ford, so you can be into it. Um, the, 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 <laughs> it's before he was so sleepy. Like he was still. <laughs> He still was like looking forward to stuff. Like you could tell he was like, I don't know, maybe I'll be King Lear. I don't know. <laughs> I, it was before that point where he was like, I can't. Everyone gets mad when I complain about. He crashed a plane on a golf course, and brilliantly, it was all doctors were golfing that day. <laughs> and he crashed a plane, and it was just a bunch of off-duty doctors that saw to Han Solo. That's fucking brilliant. There, there was a uh, there. I, I I clicked on this YouTube video uh, that was a tour of like something like it was like the headline was like uh, take a tour of uh, the world's most expensive uh, bomb shelters or something. Something caught my attention that was like. I don't know if they call them most expensive or they just named the price. Like for $1 billion, you could live here after the apocalypse or something. Yeah. And it was like an abandoned uh, military missile silo. So makes sense. You're like, oh, wow, cool. Where do you want to be in the event of something horrible? Oh, a, re, a decommissioned place where they actually thought people were going to be sitting and pushing the buttons that was yeah. nucleating the world like like probably a good place to start with your little lord of the flies fantasy. That'd be like the, the best airbnb like, <laughs> but it was so it was it was like like the whole thing was like like the intro of it the description of it was sort of like this is for rich people this is for rich people and it was like it was so depressing it was almost therapeutic because you were like yeah it it like richness in the apocalypse is going to buy you literally the right, maybe, kind of, 
to pull up to the Entertainment Weekly party of having been promised that your billion dollars is still worth anything. Yeah, what's the currency at that point? I, like, like, what like what is gold thought, worth? I swear to you, I'm, I was like, I, what I thought about the day of, like, say you own, you have, because it's like a timeshare thing, or like, or what, not timeshare, but like a condo kind of thing where you own a, a, a segment of this vast underground place. And it was impressive in terms of its, like, I, ability to keep pe rich people alive for a hundred years. Um, it, it, but it was a, it really opened your eyes to like, oh my God, if your only goal is to live and you spend all of your money on that goal, it's, it really looked like hell when you thought about, you're looking at the place and you're like, we have, and here's our wine cellar or, or like, you know, like, yeah. they, they would, and it was like, yeah, but it's not, you can't, by like making an underground thing and feel like freedom. Which Isn't that is, wild? And 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 then and you just kept imagining. I kept wa I was watching the video and I just kept imagining like we can't have an election without tearing each other's throats out. We can't we can't have a twelve twelve angry men can't decide on a on a verdict. Yeah. Without fucking drama happening. I, I life every life raft has a movie about <laughs> how we're really just animals um, uh, as its subject. Like we, you can, I can't imagine voluntarily getting in my station wagon because the mushroom clouds are happening or the gas got released. And I'm like, I got my kids that I'm in charge of protecting and my loved one. And I'm like, let's drive to the, to the place where the doomsday preppers are in charge and meanwhile, people in a weird way do that every day. They get in their fucking cars and they drive to the to the. It, we are kind of in a doomsday prepper situation. Only we're not underground with the rich people yet. We're above ground with the rich people, and we're like trusting that everything's gonna gonna be fine. Even though it's clearly like people can't. I have a friend. She can't get her insulin anymore. Like she just can't get medicine. She has to drive to some place to get the medicine. It's very expensive, and. Uh, Already, it's where that thing where you're like, well, what is worth anything? It's like, well, the, one of the creepiest things I, I've many I've heard many creepy things about the super extreme wealthy, but one of the creepy things was money doesn't mean anything to them anymore because they do favors for each other. Because who fucking needs money when you have billions of dollars? All you can do is favors. So their currency is a currency of favors, and we're the ones who are yeah. like still into money and stuff like that, and we're the ones who are hanging our coats on their benevolence with this crazy idea that it's when everything becomes automated, they're going to treat us great. Yeah. We'll be fine. The people who have all the money, they love us. They'll yeah. be great to us because we're humans, and you know they care about humans. See how they treat when humans? When the money you paid for the right to bring your uh, uh, biologically violent viable uh, family uh, into a rabbit burrow that was dug by a Bitcoin investor yeah. um, when the money that you paid him for the right to a condo in his abandoned missile silo is now officially not worth anything. Yeah. I'm sure he's going to be real tactful at the next dinner party uh, like, yeah. uh, 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 about your wife's decatelage. What the fuck did... Like, 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 like the off-color uh, comments that people make of like, like, like when it's like, oh, I, I like, well, that was kind of tacky to say to my girlfriend. And it was like, well, wait a minute. Uh, by tacky, do you mean... Hey, you could get beaten up by for that uh, by the police that I pay for with all of my money uh, in a world where if that doesn't happen, everything's going wrong. And like, like the, the, it's just like the idea of like being in an actual situation where it's nothing but fucking um, just, just b primate rules. I'm like, We're I, in I, it. I, I think I would eat a bullet before. But I, we are in that. Like the like the um um the. <laughs> <laughs> the That's the, what we're in. We're in it. Yeah, no, yeah, like, like the uh, the the road the, the the did you see the road the movie the road? Yeah, it's one of my favorites. And they just have like like it's <laughs> almost like a Brechtian because they don't they're not even bothering to try to convince you anything other than it's just read out the windows. And he's having this uh, conversation with his wife about like which bullets to use. Wait, the road, for who? The, uh, Cormac, Cormac McCarthy. Yeah. McCarthy. Yeah. yeah, I've only read the book. The yeah, there's, there's, there's a film about that. Uh, yeah, yeah. How, how it's you, terrifying. There, how do you make a movie of that? It's just about wandering and being. Like well, desolate. it's a very That's the just movie. a lot of coughing. <laughs> you just fucking cough blood into a handkerchief, and your right. kid gets increasingly pale. And then is it like I, I I would rather be the guy with the shopping cart with his son wandering the desolate like wastelands uh, and alkali just bullshit, 
than be the rich people underground. I'd rather just take my chances and be Mad Max. Like yeah, above that's above what's ground. fun about it. Not not having let's, a bunker. Well, he, well, yeah, but here's what. Let's well, make the apocalypse fun, you guys. Yeah, I think. Well, at least <laughs> turn, turn it into people like see garbage. the downside of the apocalypse. I think what Fashion Duncan weapons? and I are both kind of saying is that is that the rich people thinking that being underground is going to make it not the shopping cart experience right. are <laughs> so deluded and wasting so much of their energy right now. Not just because right. you can grab a shopping cart from Target right now, put it in your backyard, and be as prepared for what happens the day humanity loses accountability <laughs> as Elon Musk in a fucking uh, 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 Tokyo coffin what, like the, at I, the core I, of the earth. Like, who, anyone around there is just going to be like, he's not looking. He's got a Snickers in his pocket. Box cutter. <laughs> I, th I think like m maybe the first page of uh, of the road by Cormac McCarthy, uh, he, it says like it's a father and a son, and, it, and he, I think it might be page one. It says each was his other world entire. Wow! Like like that that right there is the whole book. It's like the idea that if you have somebody that you care for, that's that's tragedy. The that, backstory the, the, was that the matriarch, like she had, she had opted out. Right? Yeah, she just walked, the way she killed herself was she just walked out into it, and you were just so certain to die that yeah. she just walked in some direction. Did she do it to save a bullet? No, I think she just gave up. She was just sort of like, what's the point? Why are you? It's just so fucking, like, I, I, it, it's weird because it used to be a fun thing to think about. And it's like, I, it, I, I can't be scientifically certain whether. Oh, it's not fun to talk about because of our changing times. I could easily also another thing that's changed is I get older and older. I get more and more. I get more and more in love. I I I, I more and more. My hell becomes the idea of of Cody being hurt. So mm -hmm. I I mean that I it's a, so I. I that, that's that line, the, the, the first line. Each was his other world entire. Like that the the idea that if if you care for anything in an apocalypse, that's. Instant tragedy. That's why Spencer has always uh, never, he's never been as enthusiastic about my post election, very enthusiastic, like, uh, oh, yeah, Tuesday prepping. Cause you're basically, I know like, how to make twine, you know, it'll be great. Yeah. Making fishing traps. But Spencer kind of like, Vision, you know, wait, wait, what? You know, you like, you'd use, uh, I've seen these YouTube videos on Facebook. I guess they're Facebook videos. <laughs> you put some, you put some pipes in the water and the fish go through and then you got plenty of fish to eat. But we had, we had a Slack a channel. What kind we, of we, fish? We were using Slack to coordinate a secret survivalist colony. Yeah. It was called ba babification and, uh, something, uh, Spencer at one point kind of like, it was like his, his is a, he's more capable than any of us. Like we're like relying on him. like, you. well, Spencer, you should learn about ham radio and you should have spent, it's like, we're all relying on Spencer. And then it was like, and Spencer would be like, yeah, okay. Yeah. And like, I think maybe Cody or somebody probably <laughs> was like, Hey Spencer, are you are you are you not into this? You don't believe in this in this plan or that plan, or you don't agree the thing? And you you because you were asked a direct question, you answered directly and said, "I like, love those." You're like, well, you know, I just think that when the shit hits the fan, my chances of survival are going to be a lot higher by myself. Yeah, no, that's. I truly think, I mean, that's what all the apocalypse stuff is about. It's like you join a group and then politics happens and suddenly your head's on a spike. It's like, I want to just be hiding in the woods, catching my fishing pipes. <laughs> oh, so Not what you're saying, idea. Yeah, yeah. Okay. get a shopping cart. Try to leave the kid out of it I, if you can. But like, uh, Here's the, the thing. Can I say something? I think it's funny that we all think the world ends in a way we need to, that we're going to be able to go into a subterranean tunnel. I know. Isn't that cute? That's yeah, cute. Actually. The, it's just going to be some weird nano goo that no, we're going to be, gonna be in the middle in of the traffic, set. Just be like, trying to get away. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a nuke aimed at LA, and we're going to all just be stuck in traffic. I don't trying think to it's leave. that. I, I think it's going to be what's happening. What's happening right now is it's going to be it, one one potential way it could end is progressive layers of absurdity that drive everyone completely insane, and and that starts off with this like. Uh, 
taking you, animating you with an AI, and then that AI becomes like a thousand times funnier than you. Right. And then it starts making its own YouTube videos, but then it has an AI that's making its own right. YouTube videos. And the first you becomes completely irrelevant. So you have to deal with this kind of like, my friend calls it a schizopocalypse, where everything just shatters and we all kind of end up being like lost in the, these tiny little sentient particles in some kind of technological kaleidoscope where we've been completely irrelevantized by uh, AI. And, and there's no, by the time you get in the tunnel, you're like, I don't even know if I'm me or an, a version of me that's in a tunnel. Right. And then that's, I think, kind of, I think that's what's happening now. Why everybody's right. fuses are blowing and shit right now is because, you know, their faces are buried in the phone. Which, by the way, that's another thing when you're a parent. You, you, they keep saying, like, screen time is really bad for children. And it, the age it's bad for them keeps going up and up and up. And you're like... It doesn't stop being bad for right. you. It's bad for you all the way through. Just keep your kid off of a screen until they're 28 years old. Well, yeah. Uh, we're going to all raise a generation of powders. Uh, <laughs> but but, right. but if, it, I mean, I'm 45, but if, if I don't crush the candy, who's going to crush the candy? <laughs> I don't know. It's one of the big I mean, questions I, right I, now. I, I've been sent here. I, 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 I believe I've been sent here to crush candy. You got to do uh, it. Someone has to. Right. I think it's right. But what you're, I, I think it's, a, it's notable that the phenomenon that you're describing can be seen on an atomic level um, with, uh, w with just our general stupidity. The fact that, like, and I am, I'm included in this, I'll be sitting at a bar. Bar, and I and everyone at the bar that's arguing about some David Hasselhoff reference or what year this happened or how much money this is, everyone all again we just we would rather sit and argue. Sometimes some bars have rules. They go like, you know what? The tradition of the bar argument about the Cliff Clavin bullshit is so rich and important that n the first person that looks at their phone is, an, is a traitor to the bar crawling race. Um, but it also just happens organically and not just in bars where it's like, Look at what we're look at what we would rather do with our technology, and I really don't mean this like a, in the snobby sense. I, I, if anything, I'm kind of like let's really look at the fact that we we, we were. We, we misled ourselves in the 50s and 60s when we started like splitting the atom and writing sci-fi things about our brains getting bigger from vitamin dinners. And like, like to think that we really believe that, that the smarter we're able to get, the smarter we're going to want to get. The more information available to you, like even in high school, we were like, man, if this teacher would just let me use this calculator. And then the next year it was like, Oh, you can use your calculator now because they're everywhere and that's part of the test. And it's like, all right, well, now I don't. So I'll just take my C. Instead of, but what you wanted to do was cheat on the test with a calculator. And then once it, all, all of a sudden one day this information is all available to us. We're walking around with an entire movie studio and encyclopedia of all of the Earth's like knowledge in our pockets. And what we use the device for, it, me included, is we, we, we go to social media uh, gatherings and we go... Hey faggot! Hey homophobe! Hey fuck you faggot! Yeah, homophobe! Like, and we just do it, and then and then we'll like cut and paste stuff every once in a while. We'll like bother to Google something and go, yeah, well, twenty percent of the you're wrong, and it's like we 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 don't want to know. We don't want to be gods. We don't want to be calm. We don't want to be like like we 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 actively. So what you that like in terms of what you're saying like. That day that that Elon just launched his fucking neurofiber thing, whatever the hell, it's like it's gonna. He's like, okay, so uh, the threads are very small, and uh, um, that's my impression of him. I, I, uh, it, is that it, something it, that happened, or is that hypothetical? No, he did just, like he, what's neurofiber? He did a launch for the. It's a. It's not. It's called a Neuralink. It's like. A, it's I, for your brain to compute on. Yep. Great. It's an interface device. That, that, was after, a, that was after he put a, cool. a convertible uh, car in space? Is that after he uh, took yeah, and Grimes' eyes out? Yeah, as you guys mocked him, I kept saying. <laughs> um, anyways, but he like... He put a fucking convertible in space. He Best midlife crisis eyes. ever, man. Yeah, it's no like shit. It's the fucking it, coolest it really, it, midlife is, is crisis. Is there any more uh, like, uh, apropos metaphor for a male midlife crisis? <laughs> 
than being rich and putting a fucking dude. Car you know it's gonna space. be badass yeah. when like in thousands of years some like happy little alien society is like hanging out and like the car just smashes through their alien driveway. Like what the fuck? It's like blasting some music. It's got like a mannequin inside. No. But like it, the it, aliens it, it, are gonna find the car, and the <laughs> aliens that find the car are gonna have listened to their Elons, I and hope. they're gonna be like, "Look, it's a car. I bet they had an Elon." And they're gonna be like, "Look at this cool car." No, there's gonna be like a, there's gonna be like, and he's a, my friend. It'll be like if aliens came to Earth, and they'll be like, "There's something inside," and it's like, "Oh, that's just a mannequin." But it'll take like two weeks for them to find that out. It'll be like but a like, global incident for these be, guys be, because the universe will be awesome. Be, because mathematically, uh, the, the universe is probably infinite. Uh, there's gonna be a chance that Elon Musk's stupid convertible car it's is cool. gonna run into another like species car. Or like, like, yeah, I just explained like the, the, how that the, would happen. There's, 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 there's going to be a little... <laughs> oh, there, Elon a, a, a little, A little smash up. <laughs> Which and is then, all the more reason to launch all your garbage cars so that that accident is no. between two shitty cars that no one cares about yeah, instead but, of a bus like, full of space nuns. You, you've created... Space nuns. You've I know created that mathematical the mathematical certainty sense, but... of douchebags in space. Oh, like it's come going on. to be... He's can, a hero. You're not, can, you're not friends with him. You've met him we, once. Can we circle back to at this? At least three times. At least three times I've met him. That's a friendship. He doesn't give a... F- <laughs> he <laughs> loves him. It's a bromance. Classic bromance. Classic bromance. Classic bromance. Terrific. Yeah. Terrific. I'm glad you're happy for the classic romance. He bromance. put a fucking convertible in space. That's jealous. fun. You're jealous. Uh, no, it's stupid. It's science. Put you know it, what they say that mannequin's made of? What? AIDS. Water balloons oh. filled with his jizz. I was close. <laughs> I think that sounds See, now, cool. Now, I hope that's true. Now, that now I'm back cool. on board. Now it I'm back true. on board. Also, uh, so the car from the alien species that smashes into him, it's going to be a fucked up mess. Yeah, but that's. But I guess jizz would freeze. In the vacuum of space. space. Eventually. Sperm- spermatozoa is going to freeze and die instantly. Unless. Well, he knows something we don't know. That he's going to crash his a car into a know. uterus. Like like a space uterus. It will be. Yeah, that's what it's going to do, man. Can we circle back to the insulin conversation? Oh, jeez. It was getting so heavy and awful. I mean, I'd rather talk about the musk balloons. (laughs) I just like, because... Musk balloons. (laughs) The cosmic musk balloons. The musk balloons. Just because, like, because insulin costs a million dollars, right? Do you know how much a balloon of Elon Musk's cum costs? (laughs) I'm just saying... A lot more than insulin, man. But it only costs like $2 to make insulin. So that's called like a niche in the... Let's go hole in the market. Like we could sell $6 insulin and be fucking rich, right? Yeah. And you why can get, why and you can't can get, we do that? We can save insulin. lives. Just by eating a candy bar. I know. We got to look at That's what this. I've been saying. No, but seriously, like I don't... Unless like... There must be some sort of, what do you call it, like mob, like medicine mob that's preventing people from doing this, right? Because, like, they are literally, they're charging hundreds and thousands of dollars for something that only costs a couple dollars to, to make. There's, it anyone be should be make. able to do that. It reminds me of a cold open of the Golden Girls I just watched where <laughs> Sophia comes in and she's carrying, like, three bottles of, plastic bottles of water and she goes, here, taste this, taste this. And they all taste the water and they go, how does it taste? I was like, I don't know. It's like, it tastes like the water. It's like, is it good? Yeah, yeah, it's good. It was like, well, then we're going to be rich because I just got out of the hose in back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being a friend. <laughs> Travel halfway around the world the the again. Run again. <laughs> you're a handy person and you're also a confidant. Guess it would have taken too long to rhyme that. And if you had a party and everybody <laughs> you knew was you. there, there'd be a big box from me and it'd be bigger than everyone's box. And when you open it up, there'd be a smaller box All right. because I'm Damon Lindelof. All right. <laughs> N- now do... And the note would say... N- now do uh, per- Perfect Strangers. <laughs> Like, Wait, was oh standing strong <laughs> with my stranger and friend. 
all day long. This friendship doesn't have an end. Rain and thunder, strangers and rain. It's a new stranger day. Yeah. Because it's my life, my dreams. Nothing's going to stop me now. Right. Now do uh, um, uh, mash. <laughs> oh God. My wrists are bleeding. <laughs> Don't go there, man. If that, you did, if that bums you, you guys know. out, you definitely shouldn't There's a lot watch of mash. A, a it's lot, a really dark. A lot show. of a lot of Korean War vets are the continent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, how about uh, wait? I have a mash. Can strokes. I do? Wait, can I do a mash trivia about yeah, the theme song? Yeah, please. His kid wrote it. Did Robert you know Altman. that? Like uh, an eleven-year-old wrote uh, "Suicide Is Painful." Eleven? So I, was like, I don't when know. When I heard his true. son wrote it, I da, pictured it was like nineteen, da, 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 and it was like, get a job. Yeah. Eleven-year-old. Because if you listen to the lyrics, they're awful. They're like yeah. they make no Suicide sense. Is painless. What are you doing down here? I'm Robert Altman. What are you doing? <laughs> You're fucking around on a guitar. You know, oh, I'm a musician. Well, then do something with it. What do you want me to do? I don't know. I don't fucking know. Robert, help your son. You can't yell at him. Give him a chance. He's Robert Altman's son. All right, look, uh, I'm making this movie about a war. Put a theme song on my desk by 8 a.m. and maybe I'll use it. Fucking theme song, stupid. Fucking, I wish I was dead. <laughs> Fucking suicide wouldn't hurt that much. Might as well fucking stick your dick in a river and everything's full of shit there. This is pretty good. <laughs> what the fuck? Here's your Emmy. Here's your, here's your retirement package. Might what are you well going to do now? Might Nothing. as well stick your dick in a river. <laughs> <laughs> That's... I mean... That, that sums up the Korean crisis so well. <laughs> <laughs> well, that happens. You know, people, they don't judge the speed of water, you know, because water can look right. really, really peaceful. Exactly. You stick your dick in it. Exactly. Suck down. Like, you time. see the videos where the people get pulled into the L.A. River doing that all the time. Yeah. All right. Dan, uh, speed round, <laughs> different strokes. Well, a man can't move till he gets a different stroke. When he comes to you, you better take a poke. There's a man that's born. He's a man of means. Then along come two. They, they got, got nothing, nothing but, but the jeans, but they got different strokes. They got different strokes. They got different strokes, they got different strokes to move the world. You know who wrote that theme? A eugenicist. Who? Oh. Alan Thicke. Really? Whoa. Alan Thicke was it wrote the uh, jingles and themes. All right, now do uh, Growing Pains. Uh, you know Alan Thicke was like a the last time I grew with you. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I... uh, here's a little trivia fact about Alan Thicke. He's a eugenicist. I've heard. He's, uh, <laughs> which is why he, the he different shows the... they've got nothing but their genes. Yeah. Whoa. Oh. Well, I always, I, I always oh, really. Found it's everywhere, that guys. Lyric to be. <laughs> everywhere. A man is born, he's a man of means, then along come two, they got nothing but their genes. Yeah. I have, I'm sorry to the late, great Alan Thicke, who I believe has passed. Uh, Originally, it was they've got nothing but their DNA. <laughs> Originally, it was they got nothing but perfect bumps on their heads. Yep, Phrenology. that's right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> the, the 1800s, yeah, yeah, that was like a whole thing. <laughs> And then along come two. They have nothing but the uh, capacity for a, a certain amount of uh, small lead balls to fill their skull uh, post mortem. Yeah, it, it was. Dark. That's cool. Yeah, uh, I wonder how many lead balls. Could small fit in wonder. My skull. Small wonder. Go. She doesn't want you to worry about much at all in this life. She's a robot. Dressed like a weird, anachronistic schoolgirl and talks in a high-pitched monotone. Did we cast her for her charisma or did we do the opposite? <laughs> it was sold in syndication so no one had a chance to realize how disturbing it was to watch before they ordered 100 episodes. She's a small oh, wonder <laughs> and she'll say weird shit you can repeat. Small wonder. 
That's the only part I remember is actually yeah, yeah. she is a small wonder and she'll make your dreams <laughs> come true. true yeah. Is she making your dreams come true? That. I don't know. What about our night court theme, Jeff? Night court. Days in the night court. Days aren't no, day, much fun. God damn it. Days in the courtroom. Uh, days in the courtroom. Aren't, aren't much, much fun. fun. Come to the night court. Everyone. <laughs> Your frowns on trial. Approach my smile. I sentence you to stay a while. <laughs> Night court. <laughs> that is a diamond. That's a lot better, sorry, than a long come to. They got nothing but their jeans. <laughs> Uh, oh, I guess someone had to be home by three. <laughs> what the fuck? Just go back. Maybe a man of means isn't the fucking right where to... Is it like, like, just change your lyrics, Alan Thick. Sorry, I know you're dead. Your frown's on trial. Approach my smile. I sentence you to stay, to a, stay while. a while. <laughs> it's, uh, a, it's a half hour. It's a I, half hour we, I, we didn't get paid anything to write that. <laughs> Alan Thick probably bought a house with his different strokes lyrics money and their shitty lyrics. It's a catchy song. Yeah. It was blared over loudspeakers into the proletariat's brain for eight years, so we can't really actually know if it's a good song or not. If Alan Thick had to have a SoundCloud account, then we'd know what he's really made of. Oh, fuck. That's scary. Yeah. Hey, everybody. It's Alan Thick. I'm coming at you on SoundCloud. I don't know how SoundCloud works. Do you? Yeah. Do you do a SoundCloud ID? Hey, everybody. It's <laughs> it's Dwayne SoundCloud coming at you. Uh, partly cloudy. Chance of sound. <laughs> Here's my latest uh, experiment with uh, GarageBand. Uh, a wicka 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 boop doop 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 doop. His name is Dwayne. <laughs> you don't have a SoundCloud? That's crazy. I ain't got no SoundCloud. That's nuts. Fool. I ain't got no SoundCloud. I ain't got no SoundCloud. Let me tell you what. Day sound comes in a cloud for real. God turns his back on this country. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you what else. Uh, they tell me, they tell me, uh, oh, sir, is that her, her, her name is... Uh, is, uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Uh, 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 sorry, I was just like hooked on that thing where he like. Did you see that clip where he? All right, whatever. I'm not dragging. I don't know much. what you mean. The president, the Nazi president, he had this rally, a r actual Nazi rally oh, in the middle shit. of the country, and was like, "Hey, what about these uh, chicks that are like from uh, different places with their cheekbones?" And everyone was like, "Fuck them, burn them with the stake." And he was like, mm, "I love it." And, the, and it was like, it was fucking insane. Uh. Because it crossed a huge threshold. The people, I'm, I, I, I know everyone understands that it's fucking like more insanity. But do you really understand the threshold that we really crossed? Because pre, when, when, previous to this, anytime anybody was like trying to like be an apologist for this openly fascist slide we're taking, the way that they would apologize for it would be to go, um, "Hey, uh, I work. I have a friend who worked for the Clintons." And the, you have no idea, man. They are no better. Or they go like, hey, what was Obama's thing or any better? And it'd be like all these things that I, it's like, okay, I, like, like that was the bent of it. It right. was like, hey, it's, uh, it looks like a little bit like a fascist coup, but, uh, but what do you mean that last thing wasn't fascism? Come on, Obama had those drones. Um, and this was like an actual crossing of a threshold where he was yeah. like, these elected officials in my country yeah. that I won an election in, that I have no reason to do anything about, unless, of course, the actual structure of the way things work. <laughs> and maybe it doesn't work for me that good. These ladies represent this thing. And they were like, invalidate them. Make them not citizens. Ta make them go away. And he was like, worse than... I'm going to say it. Hitler would have been like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, 
Mm, I love it. Like he's just lazy and cowardly about it. And then two days, yeah, it was like the 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 cowardice is the fucking worst part of it. There's I a- forgive the Americans in the audience who got caught up in a thing. Look, I this podcast has been around long enough that we we can draw the parallels. We were in Chicago, and a dear friend of mine who remains a friend of mine to this day. I, I like like said the N word because I asked him not to say the N word, so he thought it would be a funny joke to say the N word. And in response to him saying it, maybe due to some fucking zeitgeist of energy about people being afraid of their freedom of speech being turned, a, 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 a crowd of people in an amphitheater burst into applause for the N word. I don't, I don't, I doubt all of those people were racist, and I don't think I'm better than them, and I don't think anybody's worse. Crowds are allowed to act like fucking animals. That's what they do. Like, it is a fucking horrible un-American thing to incite that energy and then do nothing. Nothing at all. It would be more American to fucking own it and go like, yeah, you heard me, because then at least you could be like, oh, yeah, he, he was caught up in it too. He was a little bit American. He's a fucking lazy, napping child having a dream about eating his own shit. And like... <laughs> The only thing more dangerous than anything is anything with a loaded gun that doesn't know it's loaded. Like, he's so fucking dumb and cowardly and lazy that he's going to destroy us all. Anyways, so I I just... Here, you know, to add to that, if you want, like, something that really creeped me out uh, is I watched... One of Nancy Pelosi's gets put out this awesome documentary about going on the press tour with George W. Bush. It is really good. And it's like all these jaded reporters and they're cool though. And they're just like, he's full of shit. He's full of shit. And then like they're filming George W. Bush and you see, man, he is so charismatic. Like he is so incredibly (laughs) weirdly charismatic that in in a weird way, he's like, it's like, I'm watching it like, holy shit, man, that is some crazy magic he's doing. He's like, you know, he's like just winning everyone over. Everyone's getting won over by this like incredible, weird Texas Illuminati charisma thing that's like radiating out of him. You don't want to like him, you know? See, I don't know how many people he ended up killing or being part of killing, but well, oh, I don't wow. know, the civilian casualties, what, 100,000 in Iraq yeah, or something? But I know. Like, he's like, you know, he'll just he's like, uh, yeah, see these boots? These are, they go up here. You know, because uh, snake bites, they're pretty bad. <laughs> I'm going to kill... <laughs> I'm going to kill 100,000 people. And it's like, you know, it's like, whoa! He's, but at the, at, at the end of this press tour, he says this thing to the reporters. He's like, you know, I don't appreciate a lot of what, what you, you said about me in the press, but I, I respect all of you as people. And I was <clears> like, <throat> I, I, I was like... that. That's gone. That used That's to be. Gone. That used to be part of the fucking. I mean, I guess we've become our dads, maybe because now I I, don't, I I can't tell the difference between like, like oh, old people get old and then they go, you know what you used to call boring, stodgy stuff. Uh, now you know, and then you just start deciding. Well, that's across the line, but I don't. I don't think that's the case. I believe we're in a constitutional crisis because I believe that previous to this, the the fucking left and right margins contained um, uh, things like the the, 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 the the right for a fucking free press and and an actual need for them. Mm-hmm. Like there was this tradition and it was actually part of what disillusioned us, I think, is because it felt rhetorical because, well, if you really believe that, then why are you why are you acting the way you act? Why are you bombing this country and then sitting at this correspondence dinner and saying uh, uh, to quote, uh, JFK, uh, the the press is right to to defy me. It was more about you know it's a, it was all so rhetorical feeling, and it was like oh this all means nothing. And I think that's part of the excitement when someone goes, you know what is it me or is all of this just a bunch of poopy doopies? And, and everyone's like poopy doopies, and they're like like let's see if it is. Let's find out if it's poopy doopies. And then the and then everyone's like it's not poopy doopies. You will report to detention at once. And then they're like what if we didn't? Ah poopy doopies. And it's a fucking crisis because it turns out ain't ain't no reason it ain't poopy doopies or and there ain't nothing to make anyone go to detention and it was actually we were we were actually being held together with the fucking weird compulsion for rule of law. Yeah, well, you know that creepy thing in the home invasion like that. There's that great movie Funny Games where <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. The that original game? It's, or it's, the re- the American I, remake? The, I, the, I, I thought you were getting game game night wrong. No, no, no. <laughs> I thought you were like my parents. You're like well, that movie. You know, the, 
Funny Games is awesome. Home it's Invader It's about these movie. two kids show up and they're weird and they're they're causing problems. The one, oh, that. Oh God, that's a, yeah, such right? an assault. Of it. Isn't but that you Charlie's don't want to believe it. You don't want to believe that you're getting home invaded. So you're yeah. kind of like, oh, okay, okay. Well, maybe you guys are just a little off. And by the time you're like tied up with your husband whose knee is being broken, and the and, the, and then you know you realize like, oh fuck, I got home invaded. Like this is yeah. really happening. Yeah, and then yeah. you're supposed to spend the rest of your short life as you're being dumped into a pond with a cement block tied to your neck. You're supposed to sit there and wonder, your dying thought is, should I have clubbed a random child in the head as soon as you showed up on my porch? I guess I should have been really ma- very hateful and mistrustful. That was my big mistake, was trusting people. Oh, gosh darn me, I guess that's why I'm dying a horrible death. Like, that's the horrible thing about evil, is the way it spreads is like, well, you should have... It's like, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you. You know, like anybody that's like been in a car with kids knows like what that antagonism has its own sentience. It, even wow. the, it's like, 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 are you getting mad? Are you getting mad? Because there's no wrong answer to that question. Yeah. You're either going to let me keep fucking with you or you're going to blow your stack and prove that I should have been fucking with you. Well, cowardice, you can't be like, it's not, some people I think confuse their, 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 their cowardice with benevolence. And it, it's not, you're not benevolent, you're just afraid. And usually the, the the situations when you're afraid to just to cause uh, for a confrontation like they're saying now people watched epstein flying all these underage kids to his island way after he got convicted there's a you know news report like the people are like I, we kept seeing him with these kids and it seemed really bad nothing happened they didn't they they they're they're something i think in a in a person in general gets feels so little sometimes or so insignificant that you don't want to fight back and so that's, we know, what fosters all of the horrible shit that's happening is like in these closed systems where your job's at stake, you keep a secret, and then you're, there's blasphemy that can happen in the sense that if you say the thing about the person who's supposed to be okay, it could destroy, oh my God, it could destroy the business, a family, a, a, you know, a, a, a religion or whatever. Right, so a sensible person does nothing. Right. Yeah, that's Which what I'm is, saying. I'm not, yeah, I'm not being <laughs> yeah. ironic saying that. It's like a sensible person does less than a less reasonable person. Well, you were saying antagonism has like its own sentience or spirit yeah. in the same way this level of, I think, um, turning your back on a thing, even though it's clearly happening right in front of you, it has its own spirit too. And, and, and when, yeah. you, when you realize that there's people who literally thrive on that reality and not not exploit it. I mean, this is like a a con artistry is find a person, you know they want to be nice. That's the first mark against them is like, oh shit, they're just afraid and they think they're good people. So I'm going to come to them. I'm going to like hypnotize them, get them invested in whatever my bullshit is. And then I'm just going to, you know, turn them into my slaves, humiliate them, take everything from them. And then by the time I'm done, they're going to pretend it didn't happen because they, they're from the Midwest or whatever you yeah. said, and they didn't want to be rubes. So they're going to ignore that they even got fucked with. And then that's what produces the situation, I think, where yeah, people that take over a cool party by doing a bunch of crazy fucking shit, um, they had nothing to lose. They were not the cool person at the party. So kicking over an ashtray, jumping off the roof in your underwear into the yeah. pool, like it, it, it causing the cops to get called. Like it didn't, it, th- those people, they don't take risks. They only enter win-win situations. They they flow to the lowest point of of, of human pathway where they're like, well, actually, that was like when 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 this shit bag was 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 running, he was constantly um, uh, blowing that horn because he would go, I don't think I'm gonna win because probably everyone else is cheating, but if I do win, it's because I'm awesome. Hmm. And it was like, 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 oh, are you sure you don't want to cover a couple more bases, you fucking three-year-old? <laughs> like, really? You don't want to stick your neck out a little bit, like as much as you did when you tried to sentence five black kids to die in the fucking whatever, man. All right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I mean, it's not, it's not like we all know the. Fu- it's just like, like he, I, he's, I, he's going to win again. I, I'm trying. To, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't have to. to we don't again. have to bump people out with that. I, I and I didn't. I was like, <laughs> he I, was going to win the first time. He's going to win the second time. There's no fucking reason to doubt that. There's no fucking reason to doubt this that. This stuff is only valuable to us. In as much as it uh, causes us to have conversations that you know, I, I obviously you guys 
have more than enough people talking to you about everything that's going on and like I, I'm mm. not the person it's not that's why I've been more and more quiet about politics uh, with every passing uh, uh, episode because it's like I'm not helping by talking about it and, um, I, had, and I had a driver in Canada in Canada in Saskatchewan which is like like the Oklahoma of Canada uh, it's it's very rural it's very like red statey like if you know like that's the comparison to like like it's they hate Justin Trudeau our driver nice guy funny guy he said yeah he, said, he goes I, I want to shoot him shoot and, Trudeau and, yeah and, and I said well you you sound like you're from Texas he goes yeah but in Texas they let us they, they would let you have guns like like they hate Justin Trudeau because he's Whoa. the he, he's the liberal smart guy that speaks three languages and is charming uh like like it's fucking nasty everywhere you go and the idea that you don't think that Trump will win again is crazy well you know uh i think you're probably right um and i'm sorry were you about to make another no point? no no, no. the end uh, we're, we're all going to watch trump get a fucking second term because yeah. there's no reason to assume otherwise but well, that's a but i want to let you go on that but but like that's all, but you can say that in a positive way like 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 like, <laughs> like like we 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 all get to vote our conscience this time around like we don't have to like like let's not get sucked into the game of like uh may possibly like yelling at our friends about like well you know if you don't vote for fucking generic uh Johnson, then we have no chance of winning. It's like it might be an invitation to for people to explore new ways of thinking. But, but yeah, that's what you're saying. That's what I like. Uh, Uma Thurman's dad. A lot of people don't. Now know here this. we go, Robert. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm glad we finally got on this. To get to the conversations that that, that that's what it I'm took saying. Took us an hour and a half, but we finally made it. His, his, her dad's like this really amazing Buddhist scholar named Robert Thurman. And he's like best friends with the Dalai Lama, and he's written a lot of great books on uh, Buddhism and politics and Buddhism and activism because people don't realize that the, the, the two go hand in hand. But I was talking. I love that he named his kid Uma because he's so Buddhist. His kids named him Robert, and he became a Buddhist. <laughs> and he named his daughter Uma, actor. <laughs> well, he his he was saying that we can't get cynical like uh it right now is the perfect time to get super cynical and if you get super cynical you're going to get shut down if you get shut down that's exactly where they want you because they want cynical pessimistic shut down people who get so gloomified by the current political system that no one votes yeah that you just give up and not just vote in the in the big elections but just vote in local elections and get really involved in, in your community because you can pass stuff at the state level that creates at least many force fields to in some way or, or another you, help. I mean if that shit's not more important than the fucking yeah. dumb reality show at the top then we wouldn't be alive right now and the guy at the top wouldn't be focusing his fucking nuclear dipshitness on local representatives of fucking neighborhoods where they were unduly elected by their own constituency who probably look and think like them. Like, 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 like yeah. he, th it is because the whole shtick of thinking locally, acting locally is so, it is the huge threat. You can't, you can't stand at one of those rallies and make everyone in Portland um, stop making their own cheese. I ran out of ways to. Uh, <laughs> everyone go make their own cheese. I don't. I don't. I was like that. That the the those representatives are like. Look at the inverse relationship they have. They represent something. <laughs> no, no pun yeah. intended. Like there and and it's it's a it, it's drawing a thing from that party. They're going. Here's our strategy because we have no opposition on the uh, left. Um, in terms of like a mecha Godzilla to our Godzilla, which is actually a problem for them. Because if people get fatigued, as they very well might, of a fucking autocrat, they might just actually find it more appealing for a Jimmy Carter to just step up and be like, hey, I like the taste of fucking graham crackers and milk. I don't need any more of this shit. I'm fucking tired. God damn, you wore out my racist bone. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I didn't tell my mom. Yeah. I, I pretended I voted for Trump, but I, I secretly voted for Jimmy Carter because I'm tired of being racist. I got so racist right. the last eight years. It hurt. Anyways, but uh, um, like that is why, because they, you could, his instinct, everyone's like, oh, it's a distraction for the Epstein thing. That, that guy's never done delayed gratification in his life. Like he doesn't, he's not like, oh, I think I'll think one thing and not say it. 
Um, it, it, he, what he's doing is very organic and natural. He's like, I only understand fighting. And he's saying, like, Joe Biden's not worth fighting. If he fights Joe Biden, he looks like a fucking dummy. He's going to be like, oh, sleepy Joe. And it's, gonna, it's only going to inflate. It's, and so he's like, these socialists, these women of color, like he want, they, their whole t- camp like is going, um, th- these faces, this identity politics is powerful. It can displace us. And so that's, a, that's an uplifting thought. They're scared of it. They believe that uh, one Skywalker can blow up a Death Star. They are very oh, worried wow. about it. Yeah, I, I, that's, I, that's my, I mean, that's my hope. I, that's always been every, that's what we hope for, for sure. Yeah. I, 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 I went through a real shitty, like dark cynical period and then realized I'm like, oh, this is one of the great things about being married. My wife was like, you know, you're a hundred percent wrong about all your political predictions. Cause I'd been <laughs> like, just like making, pr- but she said that to you. Yeah. And oh, I, yeah. I, I, was, I, I realized that like, yeah, a couple of years ago, I'd be like, I've been wrong about literally everything the political best I've ever to said. to realize that, like, you don't understand geopolitics. I don't understand geopolitics. It's not, I just don't know. That doesn't mean we shouldn't interact with it. But the thing I at least have been trying to do is like in my own home, try to not bring that shit in there. And then uh, this guy, Chokim Trumpa Rinpoche, says that if you want to like change society the way you're, you're going to have to do it is maybe the isms will work like maybe we can make find a socialism that works a communism that works a capitalism that works a little elon musk jism maybe works. jism always works baby always works you gotta pop those musk balloons yeah <laughs> don't pop well, don't wait to you pop save them, them. Yeah, don't pop. The balloons are there to protect them from the vacuum of space. But, but no, the balloons are acting like an airbag. Why keep the jizz in the musk balloon if you, you don't, don't want to like... form a lethal cum cloud around the Earth? It'll instantly disperse in a spherical <laughs> pattern. They, they, it'll block. Yeah. It'll block the but you, you're, you're vitamin one of the, D. You're one of those musk jizz hoarders that wants to keep it in the balloon. I'm saying let's disperse the musk jizz. I would like. You're those... a party man, but we're thinking about the end of the world. You got to get those jizz balloons down in your bunker. Wait no. for a special occasion. Pop those jizz balloons right now. But that's. I think there's a. That's the. <laughs> you, you see, I'm not gonna I, pop the balloon, you, you man. See, you, you, you guys deflected. Uh, you, you, uh, you, you, you guys want to keep. That's your problem, Duncan. You what? want to, you want to keep the jizz inside the balloon. Sure, it's a the, souvenir. Why? Uh, because it came from Elon Musk's dick. Yeah, Do but you know, but, you, but, what if you had Thomas Edison's jizz? I would, I would pop that balloon too. Well, you would have made the worst mistake of your life. <laughs> you're gonna pop a balloon. No, you, fi- you're one of those people that wants to hoard jizz balloons. Of, of geniuses, and you want to hoard genius jizz and, and balloons. I would like the woolly mammoth to come back. Right, but you would keep it in a balloon and not, not you, you wouldn't you pop you that? Pop Jeff, the whole point of putting Elon Musk's jizz in a balloon and launching it into space is not so that it surrounds the earth. E- Elon can surround the earth with jizz from home. <laughs> we need to get his jizz out of orbit right. where it can pop around okay, Venus, so, for instance. So, so you want to pop the balloon eventually. Yeah, well, the like, balloon, I hope, will pop on its own. Okay, that, that's, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, all I'm okay. saying you, but you want to be Duncan outside to, and it starts raining musk jizz. I, I, I want it to rain genius jizz all over my face. Okay. What do you think this podcast well, is? <laughs> what? <laughs> you've, been, you've been living in your own paradise this whole time. You're soaking wet, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh my God. Um, I did not to drag it back to the less fun thing, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that entirely. I want to actually just get the one fruitful thing out of that because what you said rem- uh, suggests that one thing, which is, it, 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 we can. It's like it's that it's the, the whole awareness thing, and it's this idea of like, oh, I'm wrong, I'm wrong about everything. Like, like it's and it's okay to be wrong, which is like that's why I was like. Those people chanting the thing at a rally, like, for, you're not, like, who cares? They're a crowd that chanted something at a rally. The customer is always right. They're Americans. They have freedom of speech. They're allowed to have a fucking weird, dumb joke get out of control. We're not. We. They don't need to be rounded up and, and investigated. There's a fucking dude right up there in a system that we designed for that purpose who has a chance to react to it and chooses the worst fucking possible path through that interaction. And and so our way of Fighting it uh, in big air quotes is like 
is actually just being like, oh, what did I learn from all of this shit last couple of years? I am, for me, using my I statements, it's like I learned that I had a huge intolerance for being out of control. For like, like I, I, like I, you know, like just like it, it, boy, was I like fucking addicted to like controlling the fucking world. It was crazy how yeah. unable I was to handle the concept that 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 shit wasn't gonna go my way tomorrow. And, and like I, I, like I, I only got a teaspoon of it, and I reacted in a way that made all of the women in my life, all of the people of color in my life, frankly, was that like, like they're like, welcome to the party. And it was like, okay, that's good. Because when that line is said in Die Hard, marks the beginning of an alliance that saves Nakatomi Plaza. <laughs> wow. And sometimes it has to start with a dead body breaking a windshield of a guy that just wanted to have Twinkies. And I know it's confusing because I'm actually the black guy in that metaphor. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, man. Like, you know, I, I want it to be great. You know, I love the idea of like, yeah, we can all, I love the, I'm going to stay optimistic all the way until I'm getting my head chopped off. And thank you very much. Put on a pike. Now, set on fire. I mean, but, I just want to point out though, the, the smattering of applause you get when you praise optimism, it's from a bunch of optimists. <laughs> ah, you're right. They're easy clappers. <laughs> That's We've always known this people. They're easy clappers. Yeah, look there at they go. Room. There they go. Easy clappers. But hey, you can still. I'm, you get your optimism doesn't mean being weak, or optimism doesn't mean having to be all like flowery and full of shit or whatever. It's like you can you can optimistically. You know, that's that great book, Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, where he's like in Auschwitz and like within that situation, he still finds a way to maintain a belief in like humanity as being a positive plus beautiful thing on the planet, even in the midst of all that. So if he could do it, I'm certain that, that we can do it in this insane revolting and, and turbulent weird time right now it's just it, I think to, for me it just means like I can't do anything about those fucking rallies like I can't do anything about that I can't do anything about they kind of hope you'd try I mean that's the whole it's, it's, a, it's as simple as biological physics like that's what a cell any membrane is it's like this uh, bi biolipid, uh, uh, what's bio, fi fuck, I forgot the goddamn. It's like, like cell membranes are just made of a thing that is, it likes water on one side and it hates water on the other. Yeah. And it naturally forms a membrane around a thing. It's like, it, they need to have their rally. Not to, uh, sorry to interrupt, but I was just like, 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 like uh, if I was sorry, I interrupted. You didn't even Why interrupt. Did I, interrupt? I don't know. I, I mean, well, I was like, like, like desperately searching for some like nice cap on the shit when it's like, I don't know, man, this stuff happens super fast. Look what happened in Iran. It can happen just like that. And all of a sudden everyone's getting arrested. And the next thing you know, shit's on fire and you didn't do anything because what were you going to do anyway? And you're fucked. I mean, really, if you look at Taiwan as an example of what you're supposed to do and then look at us, you see like the difference like they understand it enough to know oh we're gonna get out there and we're not gonna sleep and we're gonna get shot in the face and we're gonna like get beaten by thugs because we so don't want to have our freedom encroached upon any more than it already is and we're kind of like ah well as long as no the, one's racist yeah we well, yeah kind of i mean yeah because we haven't but we haven't yet hit that point you know terence mckenna said that thing where the apocalypse is already happening it just hadn't gotten to the united states yet <laughs> it's like when it's when it finally comes then then you know people tend to act because i i do have this fantasy of like shit if we all just did go like yellow vest or whatever and we really did it and we went into the streets and we're like, yeah, we don't want it anymore. And we really started like setting shit on fire and really like doing what you're supposed to do when things are really bad. I think it would change really, it would change pretty fast. Well, but yeah, if everyone did anything, it yeah. would change real fast. Yeah, but it, that, but that's to me, that's like if, if like you're a lion tamer and, and, and human, like all of us as a whole are the lion, 
then you want to keep the lion entertaining, I guess. Yeah. You want to keep it active, but you don't want it to remember what it, it's a lion. And we, when, because the moment that happens and people remember, oh, if we organize and take to the streets, shit changes fast, it's all over for them, usually. It's like a bad thing. But if you can keep the lion just, you know, pissed off, give it a couple <laughs> of swipes, let it growl here and there, but mostly keep it kind of sedated and busy typing and looking at his fucking Instagram or whatever, then you can just do whatever you want to the lion. You can fuck the lion. You can milk the lion for its sweet jizz and add it to your weird, gross semen balloon, balloon collection. collection. And okay. then Jeff will come over and pop it. I got everybody, light <laughs> everybody lights up when we get back on that track. They're like, come on. Get back to that thing. And the cynicism is like what caused all the problem in the first place, this hopeless sense of cynicism, which is like nothing I do is going to matter. It's all the same. If everyone, instead of doing that, were like, I'm going to do the best possible thing for the situation, none of it would have devolved. But it had done, people have thought that for like hundreds of years, and it created this untenable situation. That's yeah, right. cynical thoughts are there, and they should be acknowledged. I think that's a huge lesson that we that, that we learned. And I was resistant to that message because the last thing I wanted to hear a after the day I learned that I didn't control the world and that I had backed the wrong horse and that it was, it, uh, it felt, you know, it was like, the, I, I was so fucking sick of the fucking think pieces about, you know, I forgot the Rust Belt. But we what we did forget was, we, forget, we forgot that every single person was like, it, 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 yeah, we did. We did enter a world where we we're like, actually, like, you know what? There's such a thing as dismissible people, and we it, that was working for us economically up to a certain point, and then and then it and and then it became a thing that you could launch a platform off of. Some fucking dude was like, oh, all this fucking human flotsam. You could actually turn that all into one Big Mac. Anyways, I'm mixing metaphors. Or maybe not. Uh, I don't know much about Big Macs, but the. Um, <laughs> I do think that, that, yeah, cynicism doesn't need to, you don't need to choose between being cynical, which is the, the fucking belief that things are going to tend to go from high to low, hot to cold. Yeah. Like, like, like it, cynicism is reality. Tragedy is a thing that yeah, ends with a death. Yeah, but cynicism causes like the inaction. Works. But it's like, yeah, we, 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 you, it, 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 it the, the, the people that, the people that are trying to trick us into thinking you have to choose between Pollyanna and nihilism um, are, they don't have our best interests at heart because we've been living this long by finding a way to split the difference. We know goddamn well that life doesn't mean shit, and, but we are here because uh, f people that had bleaker lives than we did um, like grabbed their fucking bayonets, blenders, uh, 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 particle accelerators, what their weapon of choice in the war against chaos, and they found order. They, they, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of delusion to being a human. <laughs> like yeah. we're fucking monkeys that talk. It's not worth much if you really think about it. Which we're the only animal that can, and so we shouldn't. And it's like it's a fucking bummer. And so we make up stories and and sound clouds and stuff to cope with it. It is it is crucial to find that middle ground that to to to, to refuse the temptation to so, someone telling you no at the end of the day you're either this or you're that yeah. that's the sign of somebody that's probably trying to trying to uh, box you in and you can have joyful cynicism like the idea like cynicism is so fun like when you hit a nice cyn cynical pitch and you're really just fucking just slashing the throat of the world and as long as you just can really enjoy it and recognize like this isn't all that I am but god damn if I don't have a nice throbbing vein of cynicism pumping through me at all times you get to have your cynicism and you're right when son when a son of a bitch at some fucking yoga studio <laughs> tries to like get you to overcome your cynicism like it's bad or something fuck that that's the devil like you start that's calling Satanist. yourself yeah, yeah no, no, no. <laughs> it is well it's gonna cause <laughs> yeah. don't listen to him you react and this is the most uplifting thing about humans is that you react to that with fury yeah if you're feeling like self-loathing or there's these things that we label as unhealthy and you're like you say in front of a yoga guy um, oh, I'm so such a piece of shit. I ate a Philly cheesesteak last night. I shouldn't have done that. And like, like the the kinds of people that go like, whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop everything. Think different. Uh, like, 
it is the good part of every American that's like, no, stop stopping. Stop telling him. Yeah. Let this play out. It's Archie Bunker. It's Cartman. It's going to fucking flow like lava, make a mountain and change the landscape. Like, yeah. what? Like, what? let it be over. If you truly believe it's like fruitless, like, I'm not suggesting we go into the streets and take care of my fatness with the final solution. I'm <laughs> momentarily running out this fucking lobe in my brain that's like, I'm a piece of shit, I fucking fail. And there are ways to like grab the person next to you when they're, you know, Cody's in that space right now, her dog is fucking terribly ill and she's, 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 she's in this awful place and it's like, it's almost, it's like a drug trip coaching kind of thing where I'm like, I am, I mean, she probably, it probably isn't working, but like I, I'm always saying to her like, you can feel that feeling. Just don't you just uh, just don't act on it. It's it. Like it's it's just like yeah. It's like like don't argue with people that they're not feeling shitty uh, no. because well, then yeah. they're like fuck you. I definitely know I am. <laughs> like you're full. You're horse shit. You're well yeah because people don't want like you want to. One of those liberating things I figured out. Well, I didn't figure out. So it's a, 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 I think it's a Buddhist idea. Something uh, Chogim Trumpa talks about a little bit. Is I think uh, this is a safe place for you to just take credit for it. Okay, I invented this. I came up with a thing called Buddhism. Call it's it pretty Duncanism. fucking cool. Four noble don't, truths. Don't call it Buddhism. You're just going to get caught up in court for 5,000 years. It's this idea of like, uh, sometimes things just suck. And that's it. So... Instead of trying to put lipstick on the sock or trying to like put a little wig on the sock and you're like, yeah, you know, like I learned so much from um, getting one of my balls chopped off. It was <laughs> really a great, it True brought story. me all that stuff. It's like, which is okay to do. It's not to say that you, you don't learn from your trauma or whatever, but a lot of times you'll get around these like trauma cops who when you're trauma finally cops. getting to the point of overcoming the guilt, you're feeling about being angry at whoever the the thing was or whatever it was and you're finally feeling this pure anger someone will come to you and be like but maybe you should you know zoom out a little bit from the anger right. and just understand that uh, there's a way to really love the uh, uh, whatever the fucking thing is <laughs> you know you could just truly and it's like no fuck that it sucked Period. That's it. it was I had just two shit. whole yeah. balls. Yeah, I had two. I now have One's half gone. as many. I had one. It's mom. worse. Mom gone. Dad gone. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're gonna lose everyone. Everyone's gonna fucking die, and for real, gonna die, and they're gonna die before you expect them to. You're gonna get a phone call, and the person's dead before you expected it. It's not when you think, and you're gonna die before you expect it. And the way you die is not the way you thought it would be. Like in the movies, where you look like you look like you just got back from the gym or some shit, and you fall asleep. <laughs> No, you're going to become a drooling, doddering thing, spinning through time, sweating profusely, confused. Like, I think I'm awake. What's, where's Danny? Should we go to the car leasing station or whatever? Then you're just going to fucking croak. And that sucks, period. Just accept that that sucks. For me, that's been the most liberating thing to be like, oh, yeah, it does just get to suck. And then within that, somewhere, there's a sense of like, I think I can fucking do do this optimism shit, but yeah. I can't do it without the suck first. Yeah, I'm hungry for it now. Yeah. Exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah, I, I, I smoked the box of cigars in the closet of like, <laughs> I think there might need, be, not, not be a God. Like you can't just force feed people like, yeah. like, 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 like over and over again. Like, no, 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 don't let that in your head. Well, that's called, you know, that's what they call spiritual bypass. So it's, it's the idea is like, it's basically like if I put on an outfit, like I graduated from college, I graduated from college, but first you have to go through this, like just a, a real swamp of like, not good and not, not good, not like movie, not good or not, not good where there's like going to be a thing at the end of the not good where it's like oh see now we did we did it and now the puzzle pieces fit no it just isn't good and that's it and it doesn't get better it's actually called hopelessness and it's really one of the most beautiful things ever to finally become absolutely hopeless because uh, that means that you do, you're not torturing yourself anymore with a fantasy of the way things could be. That's pretty great. And I advise it uh, for anyone to become absolutely, completely hopeless. <laughs> well, but out, that's where optimism starts. Optimism grows from the soil of hopelessness in the most beautiful way. Because if the universe exists and it was created by a, any kind of sentient deity, can you imagine how hopeless that motherfucker must have been in uh, order to cre bother to create <laughs> 
hope uh. out of thin air. Mm. Like that must have been a sad piece of shit. <laughs> like, 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 it was like, 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 like oh, um, genuinely, absolutely, 100% positive that there's no meaning to life at all because here I am and there's nothing if I don't do it. And they're like, I think I'll fuck with that yeah. because they I, wanted I, I, hope. I, I, I want to create the idea <laughs> of uh, mortality. Is, right. Is, is, is that, that's, that's, and so, and so, he, at, and so at your that, hopelessness, he's a serial killer. Your hopelessness is your atonement with the with the cosmic entity. It's like whether you, if you're an atheist, then that means nothingness. Your hopelessness is you aligning as raccoons and giraffes cannot, no matter what they tell you. <laughs> your <laughs> sentience allows you to align with the unliving, impersonal cosmic bulldozer that was so selfish and shitty and scared and that it made the universe. You, you, the, the, uh, those moments when, you're, you, you, when you've got that, that gun in your mouth and you don't know who to talk to and stuff, it's like, if you can just scrape that bottom of the pool and just come back up in due time, just don't do the permanent thing. Don't, don't do the thing that... You mean, are you talking about suicide? Don't kill yourself? Yeah, that's an easy stance to take, isn't it? Well, well, I mean, yes, and I know, like, don't do the permanent thing, but the the other, for me, like, the I think suicide um, is, man, it's a gamble because you are assuming... I thought I really just had the easy point of view on this. I didn't, I, I, no, I'm saying, like, kids, if you haven't contemplated suicide, you know, I would be, that would be surprising to me. So any, I think anyone who's sentient and experiencing suffering and wants to find exits, that's the first thing that pops yeah. into your head. So I've thought about it a lot, and uh, my conclusion is, oh, well, it's uncertain about what happens upon extinction. Like, for example, if we knew that we somehow had some way to really show sentience is based on neurobiology, and when you kill yourself, there is a pure extinguishment of all identity, a kind of like what uh, Dawkins calls death is the anesthesia that saves us from the pain of eternity stuff. Like, we get fully put under. Jeez, There's Dawkin. no coming back. He's um, not the band Dawkins. Oh, I was Richard like, okay, Dawkins. all right. Well, I got I to gotta revisit my... Wait, Don Dawkins? <laughs> You've never heard that Dawkins song? <laughs> <I'm> a... <laughs> fucked up. God damn, Dawkins. Time warriors. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have to go back and re-listen to Dawkins. that before their... Uh, but you're assuming... On the Elm Street 3 soundtrack, they... they... All right, c continue. Sorry. Man, I don't, the, 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 to me, it's like, what if you kill yourself and the momentum of the pain that you were experiencing that drove you to do self-violence continues into some uh, liminal bardo state and that momentum brings you into another incarnation and then you're just in this never-ending cycle. So it was a failed attempt. It didn't work, so it, doesn't, it, it didn't solve the problem. And so to me, that's a good... That that definitely has kept me from. I guess that's an interesting myself. like kept you from what like definitely. killing myself. It's a it's like Jesus fucking Christ. Do you know when you jump out the window and you're like fantasizing like maybe when I jump out the pavement turns into like a lake or something and I dive into nothingness. How do you know you don't just suddenly come to and you're driving like a metro bus having a deja vu and or you the just nature like, of Shit. time and consciousness is so variable that it's the moment that your skull impacts with the pavement that actually gets protracted into a subjective eternity. Yeah, like exactly. Some like, yeah, infinite ketamine, like agony moment that goes on and on and on. The point is we just don't know. And and because of that, it seems like, or what I've, I've been taught is it's better to work on extinguishing the illusion of the identity rather than the physical body because the physical body is actually a secondary consideration. I wish we had started here instead of almost ending here because this is such an interesting thing. Maybe, maybe we both just got too drunk but uh, the <laughs> but because what I, I would I would want to add to that is I'm you're that's very interesting and clever to come up with a logical reason not to do it but I see as the big problem is the search for logic and then when people feel like they lose their logic they feel then tempted mm. it's the pain of of directionlessness and like uh, just that emptiness where, where you're like, well, I, it hurts. And, and I think that's a really interesting thing about humans is that our neutral gill, ge gear, ge gill, holy shit, let's, we're, we're almost done, folks. I, I, the, our, our neutral gear is painful to us. If we're not engaged, we're actually feeling wrong. We're feeling eaten alive by like these weird 
uh, cyber Christ nano insects from uh, Lawnmower Man, and like, um, <laughs> like yeah. just just watch it in Mosquito Coast. That's your uh, Oprah <laughs> Oprah list. The so so I just I'm, like like I, I I definitely lost the power to articulate what I'm saying, but like I it is interesting to be like, hey man, don't kill yourself because you never know. It's also like it's more important like to me to be like, yeah, you never know, so don't kill yourself. I know that sounds like the same thing, but like I I just like it's a feeling. It's a it's always a feeling. That's the weird thing about humanity is there is no logical reason to stay alive. There is only just just hanging out. And it it it's that it's that belief that if something doesn't make sense, it shouldn't exist that can be fatal for kids who ha- who don't have an experience yet with like oh shit sometimes shit just is super dark and confusing and then and then all of a sudden it's not and they don't know that when they're 16 and then they do the, the they do things that any human can do they have the power to do things that you'd never do when you were 40 just because you've experienced more 16s by then you've been like, well, yeah, this too shall pass. And, 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 I, and, and so there is this wisdom, even though it sounds kind of provincial, it sounds like your, your old daughtery guidance counselor, but it's, it's just like, just don't act on anything that you're only feeling. It doesn't mean Duncan, your feelings like, aren't valid. Is, is that a, a common thing that you think about, or is that something that just comes up once in a while, the idea of like, of like offing yourself? Like, oh, I... I, I, I used to get depressed. I haven't gotten depressed in quite some time, thank God, but I used to get like severely depressed, and part of that is like intrusive suicidal thoughts. But he'll be thinking about it next Wednesday night in a cage with uh, <laughs> but, 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 Elon but, Musk. But, but, like, <laughs> for, 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 for real. Pay per view. Like, like, like our, our 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 friends keep uh, killing themselves. Like our, our our funny friends keep dying. I'm not gonna kill myself. Good, <laughs> don't please. And no, uh, I'm no, I'm not. I'm this was. But, but no you said that that's actually a thought that you, that, that that like runs through your brain. Oh God, I would. I love. I really love being alive, and I wouldn't. I like. I I, str- I used to have depression. I don't now, but I and I and it recurred through my. Life. I've thought about it too. Yeah. I think it's important for people to go. Like it's a thought. How, that how did you possible. go from being uh, thoughts of depression into not being depressed? Like, w- what was the transition for you? Jesus, there? it was fiber. a long fucking fiber journey. <laughs> It was fiber. my fiber journey. You should read my book. It's on Amazon. I've read, a, I've read your fiber blog. Fiber cured my depression. Fiber <laughs> enemas. Spencer, right. you got thoughts. It, it was quinoa. It was quinoa. Yeah, it's a combo of quinoa and fiber <laughs> and just like a basic, like, I, I, I rub fiber into my prolapse in the morning. And it just like makes me no longer. No, I, I, that was not. that. Just so you know, and thank you for asking. That not only is that not a cry for help, it, it wasn't. There's not a secret thing underneath it. Or like, a, I really like to be alive. I I don't have any desire at all to to no longer exist. I have this beautiful son and a wonderful wife. I love to exist. I, I like it so much. But I do think that depressed people, uh, they the even the, the this what is a psychologically documented thing, which is intrusive suicidal thoughts, become shameful. You know, you're like, oh my god, my brain spit out this horrific way of doing things and then you feel embarrassed about it because you're like you don't want to talk about it and, and also you, and you don't want to talk about it and uh, then you yeah. kill yourself but then you're like or my but you're thinking like shit man i must be so crazy that i'd want to do that when and i really do mean this is not that i'm saying the instinct to kill yourself is actually more of an instinct to move beyond who you think you are you're just desperately trying to solve the problem of this micro uh, this hardcore compression into your identity and so uh this which is why i one of the things i've heard is before you reject yourself you need to know yourself how can you reject yourself if you don't know who you are and so the idea is to first prior to any kind of horrific solution like that, see if you can figure out what you actually are. And in that exploration, it's really cool because like literally everything in the material universe, if you zoom in on it far enough, it disappears. Similarly, the identity itself, if you spend any time analyzing it and deeply looking into it, you will begin to notice the most beautiful, terrifying, and ultimately liberating thing happens, which is you, as you thought you were, cease to exist and you didn't have to jump out of a building for that to happen and somewhere in there i think is something quite beautiful and uh a far less 
destructive solution for your community. And, uh, and I think there's some compassion there too. There's something really sweet about being in all that fucking pain that you get into when you're depressed beyond pain. You wish you were in pain. You wish you were sad. Anything to not just feel that numb, dead, entropic, miasmic paralysis. You would give anything just to feel a moment of sadness. And somewhere in that, there is something so sweet and beautiful about still finding the strength to stay alive because you know the people around you would be so devastated. To me, that is a really beautiful thing. And that is a reason to stay alive and a logical reason to stay alive, aside from the fact that when you kill yourself 100% of the time, you wake up and you're having a deja vu as a Metro yeah, City bus driver. It fucking sucks. Cliffhanger! <laughs> <laughs> Duncan Trussell! Thank you. Thank you, Duncan. It's Thank you for having me. Thanks for spending your Monday night with us. Spreads are great. Then. So good to see you. Thank you all for coming. Uh, pretty special. I'm your comptroller, Jeff Davis. Your mayor is Dan Harmon. Thank you, Zach, Nolan, Church. All y'all. Drive fast and take chances, won't you? Get any of that? It's a good show!